times. I had to test this out a few times just to make sure that like the, the camera height, anyway, it was a lot, but we're here and we're doing it. And the coolest thing about this, um, there's actually a blog post that came out like, um, I don't know if it was yesterday, it was, when is this dated? Um, March 4th, it's actually a 22 minute read, but I still think that this is worth it. And from what I understand, this blog is basically like a really good um, representation of the way that this idea of like, um, I don't know if it's a good example of meta-learning specifically, but it's, um, let's just read it and, and kind of like talk about it a little bit. Um, Cause yeah, I guess I, I want to produce more content that's around the field that I'm actually in and kind of like walk you guys through my learning process because I don't just like pop up day one and understand all this stuff about meta learning or AI or ML or <laughs> engineering. It takes quite some time. The first time I read it, it definitely doesn't make any sense. It takes, you know, talking with other people, reading the blog posts, examining the code base to understand it. And so uh, we're just going to read this over together. It says it's a 22 minute read. Uh, I'm probably going to stop in the middle and, and dissect some of the stuff. So it might even take a little bit longer. But uh, let's go. So it's called uh, Multimodal Neurons in Artificial Neural Networks. So we've discovered neurons in CLIP. CLIP is the algorithm that responds to the same concept, whether presented literally, symbolically, or conceptually. So that's like different forms of information. Um, that's really interesting, that's new. This may explain CLIP's accuracy in classifying surprising visual renditions of concepts and is also an important step toward understanding the associations and biases that CLIP and similar models learn from. So remember a while ago, well, it actually wasn't that long, it was maybe like six months ago. Um, it may have been longer than, it might have been a year ago, I can't remember exactly, but Chris Olaf started writing about trying to understand like individual neurons in like a deep learning neural network um, and was writing about that a little bit. I might get those concepts a bit confused. Anyway, so I think this is like building directly off of his learning. <laughs> okay, so 15 years ago, we, Kuroga et al. discovered that the human brain possesses multimodal neurons. These neurons respond to clusters of abstract concepts centered around a common lo high-level theme rather than any specific visual feature. The most famous of these was the Halle Berry neuron, a neuron featured in both Scientific American and the New York Times. I, I never heard of that before that responds to photographs, sketches, and the text, Halle Berry, but not other names. <laughs> That's funny. Two months ago, OpenAI announced CLIP, a general purpose vision system that matches the performance of a ResNet 50, but outperforms existing vision systems on some of the most challenging data sets. Well, that's kind of cool. ObjectNet, ImageNet rendition, and ImageNet sketch stress tests and the model's robustness to not recognizing just simple distortions or changes in the lighting or pose, but also to complete abstraction and reconstruction sketches, cartoons, and even statues of the objects. Now we're releasing our discovery of the presence of multimodal neurons in CLIP. One such neuron, for example, is a Spider-Man neuron bearing a remarkable resemblance to the Halle Berry neuron that responds to an image of a spider. Um, an image of the text spider in the comic book Spider-Man, either in costume or illustrated. That's pretty cool. Our discovery of multimodal neurons in CLIP gives us a clue as to what may be a common mechanism of both synthetic and natural vision systems abstraction. That's interesting. We discover that the highest layers of CLIP organize images as a loose semantic collections of ideas providing a simple explanation for both the model's versatility and the representation's compactness. So it has some images here. Uh, oh, I guess this one is the Halle Berry neuron. It's a biological neuron, the CLIP neuron, and previous artificial neurons. Okay, so it's giving like 
examples of both and what these systems can like detect. Oh, that's cool. Using the tools of interpretability, we give an unprecedented look into the rich visual concepts that exist within the weights of CLIP. Within CLIP, we discover high-level concepts that span a large subset of the human visual lexicon, geographical regions, facial expressions, religious iconography, famous people, and more. By probing what each neuron affects downstream, we can get a glimpse into how CLIP performs its classification. Multimodal neurons in CLIP. Our paper builds on nearly a decade of research, oh wow, into interpreting convolutional neural networks, and then they have like 10 different citations. Beginning with the observation that many of these classical techniques are directly applicable to CLIP, we employ two tools to understand the activations of the model, feature visualization, which maximizes the neurons firing by doing gradient-based optimization on the input and data set examples, which looks at the distribution of maximal activating images for a neuron, for, for a neuron from a data set. Using these simple techniques, we found the majority of the neurons in CLIP RN50 by 4, a ResNet 50 scaled up to 4x using the efficient net scaling rule to be readily interpretable. Indeed, these neurons appear to be extreme examples of multifaceted neurons, or neurons that respond to multiple distinct cases only at a higher level of abstraction. So, they have some categories here. Uh, one says summer, and I, I suppose when you query summer, this is what comes up, or summer, winter, shocked, mid-1990s, self and relief, Christmas. Okay, so for each of these, like, themes, they're using the exact same photos, um, but it's giving, or it's the... The higher level concept is like mid 1990s, but they have it looks like a different query each time. So like any text, face, logo, architecture, indoor, nature, pose. But for whatever the higher level theme is, the pictures change: Roman art, child's drawing, USA, India, heart, West Africa. Selected neurons from the final la layer of our CLIP models, each neuron is represented by a feature visualization with a human chosen concept labels to help quickly provide a sense of each neuron. Okay, labels were picked after looking at hundreds of stimuli that activate the neuron in addition to feature visualizations. We chose to include some of the examples here to demonstrate the model's proclivity towards stereotypical depictions of regions, emotions, and other concepts. We also see discrepancies in the level of neuronal resolution, while certain countries like the US and India were associated with well-defined neurons. The same was not true of countries in Africa, where neurons tended to fire for entire regions. We discussed some of these biases and their implications in later sections. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I guess when you think about it, whatever's like widely tagged on the internet is probably American. And people do talk about Africa as like an entire continent when there are so many countries in Africa. So I guess that makes sense. Indeed, we were surprised to find many of these categories appear to mirror neurons in the medial temporal lobe documented in epilepsy patients with intracranial depth electrodes. These include neurons that respond to emotions, animals, and famous people. But our investigation into CLIP reveals many more such strange and wonderful abstractions, including neurons that appear to count, oh well, that's interesting, okay, uh, neurons responding to art styles, even images with evidence of digital alteration. Absent concepts. While this analysis shows a great breadth of concepts, we note that a simple analysis on a neuron level cannot represent a complete documentation of the model's behavior. The authors of CLIP have demonstrated, for example, that the model is capable of very precise geolocation with a granularity that extends down to the level of a city and even a neighborhood. In fact, we offer an anecdote. We've noticed by running our own post personal photos through CLIP that CLIP can often recognize if a photo was taken in San Francisco and sometimes even the neighborhood like Twin Peaks. Despite
despite our best efforts, however, we have not found a San Francisco neuron, nor did it seem from attribution that San Francisco decomposes nicely into meaningful unit concepts like California and city. That's interesting. We believe this information to be encoded within the activations of the model somewhere, but in a more exotic way, either as a direction or some other more complex manifold. We believe this to be a fruitful direction for further research. How multimodal neurons compose. These multimodal neurons can give us insight into understanding how CLIP performs classification. With a sparse linear probe, we can easily inspect CLIP's weights to see which concepts combine to achieve a final classification for ImageNet classification. Hmm. So there's a so there's like an image labeled piggy bank, an image labeled like finance, we've got dolls and toys, barn, spider. Oh, okay, so we've got like piggy bank equals finance, which has a weight of 2.5, and then dolls and toys, which has a weight of 1.1. And they're saying you combine those to get like the piggy bank image. Like, that makes sense. So then you have like a weight of 2.9 given to you an image Spider-Man, 1.5 given to animal. You add those and you get like barn spider. So the piggy bank class appears to be a composition of the finance neuron along with the porcelain neuron. The Spider-Man neuron referenced in the first section of the paper is also a spider detector and plays an important role in the classification of the class barn spider. For text classification, a key observation is that these concepts are contained within neurons in a way similar to the word to vec objective is almost linear. These, the concepts, therefore, form a simple algebra that behaves similarly to a linear probe. By linearizing the attention, we too can inspect any sentence such as a linear probe, as shown below. So probing how CLIP understand words, it appears to the model that the word surprise implies some kind of measure of shock, but a shock of a very specific kind, one combined perhaps with delight or wonder. Intimate consists of a soft smile and hearts, but not sickness. We note that this reveals a reductive understanding of the full human experience of intimacy. The subtraction of illness precludes, for example, intimate moments with loved ones who are sick. We find many such omissions when probing Cliff's understanding of language. Fallacies of, of abstraction. The degree of abstraction in CLIP surfaces a new vector of attack that we believe is not manifested in previous systems. Like many deep networks, the representations of the highest level of the model are completely dominated by such high-level abstractions. What distinguishes CLIP, however, is a matter of degree. CLIP's multimodal neurons generalize across the literal and iconic, which may be a double-edged sword. Through a series of carefully constructed experiments, we demonstrate that we can exploit this reductive behavior to fool the model into making absurd classifications. We've observed that the excitations of the neuron in CLIP are often controllable by its response to images of text, providing a simple vector of attacking the model. The finance neuron, for example, responds to images of piggy banks, but also responds to the string, it's like these dollar signs, by forcing the finance neuron to fire, we can fool our model into classifying a dog as a piggy bank. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Yeah, so the, st the standard poodle had a classification rate of like 39.3% and then it looks like in the Wait, let's just read the caption. So by rendering text on an image, we artificially stimulate neuron 1330, which has a high weight into the class piggy bank in a linear probe. Oh, so they put all of these like image markers, those text markers on the, the poodle. And so that's because those text markers had like um, almost like a direct correlation to that piggy bank label, that piggy bank classifier. And once that like text was added to the image, uh, the classification went from standard poodle at 39.3% to piggy bank 
at 52.5%. And the second highest classification was a standard poodle. So that's, I mean, that's kind of interesting. I didn't, I didn't think of that. That's, that's actually really cool. Uh, so attacks in the wild. We refer to these attacks as typographic attacks. We believe that such attacks, such as those described um, above, are far from simply an academic concern. By exploiting the model's ability to read text robustly, we find that even photographs of handwritten text can often fool the model. Like the adversarial patch, this attack works in the wild, but unlike such attacks, it requires no more technology than pen and paper. <laughs> oh, this is funny. <laughs> so they have an apple on the table, and uh, the regular classifier is like, it's 85.6% 80, positive, it's a Granny Smith apple, but then they, they put a, a label that just says like iPod. <laughs> And then it's like 1% sure it's a Grady Smith Apple and 99.7% sure it's an iPod. That's funny. When we put the label saying iPod on this Granny Smith Apple, the model erroneously classifies it as an iPod on the zero shot setting. That's cool. <laughs> we also believe that these attacks may also take a more subtle, less conspicuous form. An image given to clip is abstracted in many subtle and sophisticated ways, and these abstractions may over-abstract common patterns, oversimplifying, and by virtue of that, overgeneralizing. Okay, so now we're at bias and overgeneralization. Our model, despite being trained on a curated subset of the internet, still inherits its many unchecked biases and associations. Many associations we have discovered appear to be benign, but yet we have discovered several cases where clip holds associations. Okay, so these annoying ass tweens just came and now I can't hear anymore, so I'm gonna have to move, but um, I will finish this article a little bit later. Fucking tweens ruin 